In this lesson, we're going to have a look at the solving of cubic equations. In the previous lesson, we had a look at how to factorize cubic expressions, and today we're going one step further by now solving cubic equations. When solving a cubic equation, it is similar to a quadratic equation, where you have to get all the terms on one side equal to zero, so that you can factorize and then solve. So here, our first step is going to be to get all the terms on one side and put that equal to zero. Next, we're going to follow our normal steps to factorize a cubic expression. So our first step will be to use our table mode on our calculators to identify the first factor of this equation. That factor will be x minus 1. And then I'm going to use inspection to determine the quadratic factor of this expression. And that will be x squared minus x minus 6. You can always go back to lesson 2, the previous lesson, if you are unsure about any of these steps. And now, if it is possible, we will factorize the quadratic factor further. And in this case, it is possible. And we will factorize it as x minus 3 multiplied by x plus 2. And now we have the product of three factors equal to 0. That means that any one of the three factors can be equal to 0 for this equation to be true. So to get our first factor to be 0, x will have to be equal to 1. Or for our second factor, x should be 3. And for our third factor, our option is to make x equal to minus 2. Any cubic equation will always have at most three real solutions. And here we found three. Example 2. Here we are given a cubic equation. And this time it's already equal to 0. So we can start off using our calculator to determine the first factor. And that will be x plus 1. Using inspection, we can say that the quadratic factor will be x squared minus 4x plus 4, and this will all be equal to 0. Next, we're going to continue and see whether that quadratic factor can factorize further, and this one can, and will form two of the same brackets, and that bracket will be x minus 2. This means that this equation has two real solutions. Firstly, x can be equal to minus 1 to make the first factor 0, or x can be equal to 2 to make the second factor 0. In example 3, we have a cubic equation that is equal to 0, so we can start off determining our first factor, and that first factor here will be x plus 1. Next, we can use inspection to get the quadratic factor, which will be x squared minus 3x minus 5. This time, the quadratic factor cannot be factorized. So, at the moment, we know that to make the first factor 0, x can be equal to minus 1. But, to solve the second factor, we will use our quadratic formula. In the quadratic formula, a will then be 1, b will be minus 3, and c will be minus 5. Once you've substituted into the equation, you can simplify and then use your calculator to determine your two irrational answers of 4,19 or minus 1,19. So here, once again, we have three real solutions, of which two are irrational. In example 4, we once again have the equation equal to 0, so we can start factorizing. Here you can make use of your calculator to determine the first factor, or you can realize that this is a difference between two cubes. So my first bracket can simply be the cube root of each term. And my second bracket will be the first term squared, the second term squared, and the product of the two terms with the opposite sign, so plus 2x. This quadratic factor can once again not be factorized further, so we will have to use our quadratic formula. 
So we already know that for the first factor we have x equal to 2 or we can substitute into our formula and simplify. When you simplify you will find a negative value in your square root and that means we have non-real solutions. So here we have only one real solution for this equation and that is x equals 2. So from these four examples you could see that a cubic equation has at least one and at most three real solutions.